This is an exercise where we'll construct a process simulator. It's number 15 in this list of Gecko applications. This one is number 15, process simulator. We're really just setting up this one so we can generate some data for the moving horizon estimation and also use a model for model predictive controller. So 15, 16, and 17 very much go together. We're going to set this up though first with our simulation of the process. And the process can be any differential or algebraic equations that can be used in Gecko. So we're going to first of all just start off importing Gecko and then also importing NumPy as well. We're just going to need these two packages. And as we go through it, we're also going to need matplotlib to generate this plot below. So we're going to have some inputs, which are going to be our blue line there. And then we're also going to have our process output. That's going to be our model. That'll be the black line. And then we'll corrupt it a little bit with some noise. And that's going to produce the red dots. So as we go through this, we're just going to generate the uh, data points. It'll be 51 data points. And we'll give some input steps. I'm just going to create a new vector, uh, umez. And then from 3 to 10, that's going to be equal to 1. So you can see I'm just going to generate these blue steps here. And then from 10 to 20, it'll be equal to 2. So it's going to step up. And then step back down to 0 0.5. And then to 3. And then we'll have our simulation model as well. So those are our inputs. We're going to create a new gecko model. And we'll put in our time points between 0 and 10. And here we can change the process model order. So I'll change that later to something else. Um, you know, what we're going to do is have a, a set of differential equations. And that's going to be the number of differential equations that we're going to use for our model. Here are the parameters. I have some steps. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, put uh, umez in there. I guess I didn't really need steps there. Okay, you can just delete that. I'm going to use f status equals 1, so it's going to use the measurements. And then there's our gain as well. Okay, I can change that gain to a different value. Right now it's 1. And then the time constant value is 5. This is just a first order linear system. I'm going to create an intermediate, which is just going to be my u value. And then some variables. I'm going to extend p.x with variables in range n. So this n is equal to 1. I'm just going to create a new vector of variables. And then there's my measurement. Okay, so let's go ahead and just sketch this out over here in terms of what the equation is going to look like. Okay, I'm just going to include these over here, but then I'll write it out. So we have u. u is going to be our input. Okay, so let me just go ahead and make this so I can draw on it. Okay, so there I go. Okay, so u is going to be our input. And then we're going to have some differential states, which are going to be tau divided by n. And then we have uh, dx i dt equals... And then it's going to be negative, and then this is going to be x, um, and this is going to be i, and then plus, and then it'll be x i minus 1, um, or x i. Okay, if you want to do x i plus 1, like I have it written there, then this would just be x i. Okay, so there's our differential equation, and then we have one output as well which is just e is y equals k times, and then this is going to be the x at the very last value there. So if i equals 1, we just have one differential equation and one output. Okay, let's continue on with this. Okay, simulate. Here's i mode equals 4. That's going to be simulation, and I'll solve it. And then we'll add some measurement noise. Those are just some random numbers between... In this case, it's going to be uh, multiplied by 0.2. So the random number is going to go between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.2. Okay, and then we have our measurement, which is just going to be adding the noise to the predicted value. And then we'll plot these. Okay, so here is our final 
Okay, final one right there. You can see it does simulate. And then if you add this, let's say we had something like n equals 5, for example, instead of n equals 2. And it's just going to change this, uh, smooth that a little bit more. It's going to be a fifth order system instead of a first order system. Okay, we can also change the gain value. Let's say the gain was equal to 2. Okay, it's going to make it increase just a little bit more. And then you could set that to something like 5, for example. And then you're going to see the process response change. Uh, the other thing about simulation in Gecko, there's two basic modes of simulation. They both require the same number of equations as variables. You can also do I mode 7. And you should get the same answer as you did with I mode equals 4. It just does it sequentially versus a simultaneous approach. So I mode equals 4 is a simultaneous approach. Okay, if you select display is true, let's just go ahead and look at the solver display. It's just going to solve it all in one simulation. There you can see it's 550 variables and equations. And it's going to solve it with the IPOP solver. And it took about you know just a fraction of a second to solve it. Now if you solve it the other way with I mode is 7, you know, sometimes for very large models, it will actually be an advantage to do it this way. So this one breaks it down into just 11 variables that you can see right over here number of variables and equations, just the 11. And it'll do those one after the other in a series of time steps. So the total number of time steps that we had here, which was going to be equal to 50 time steps, 51 data points, uh, it's going to do that 50 times. And each one is just going to take a fraction of a second. But then those are going to add up uh, to a total solver time output. OK, so you can either do it sequentially with iMode 7 or simultaneously with iMode 4. So let me just give you a quick preview of what's coming next. We're going to do some moving horizon estimation where we're going to use a different model and try to recover some of the parameters that we had in our simulator. Okay, things that we just generated. And then we're also going to use model predictive control as well. So I'm just going to run this and there you can see model predictive control. So all of these examples are available if you just come to just search for AP Monitor Gecko and then you'll be able to see uh, one of the links here are these 18 different applications that we went through and there you can get the notebooks for example the solutions or just the blank exercise notebook and there are some source code options down here as well so there's the process simulator that we just talked about. So you can get that with the get code link down in the bottom right just to get the raw, uh, the raw file there. Okay, so I hope this uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. This one is um, you know just about the process simulator and uh, we're going to go on to the next example which is going to be moving horizon estimation.